Well, hello again. I'm excited to be filming another Cook Nook today. After I posted my last Cook Nook on the spinach and ricotta stuffed shells last week, one of the most common comments that I got in response was, why don't you make your own tomato sauce? Don't you know that homemade tomato sauce is so much better than that crap you get in a jar from the store? Uh, and actually, I do know that. <laughs> um, I know it very well, but it was just too much work in one day to make the sauce. I didn't feel like it. Um, just wanted to focus on the shells and the filming. However, that's inspired me to make my mom's homemade uh, meatballs and marinara sauce. My mom is Italian, and this is the you know her family recipe for marinara and meatballs, which you know there's a recipe for that in every Italian family. I think my mother's version is particularly awesome, uh, so I'm going to make it for you today. So this is the page from Jennifer's uh, book of family recipes that describes my mom's meatballs and marinara sauce recipe. Uh, I'm going to start with the marinara sauce uh, because you know this only says to simmer it for 30 minutes but really you can simmer a marinara sauce for hours and hours and it only gets better so I want to get the sauce going on the stove and then I'll uh, assemble the meatballs and this, um, this method calls for baking them in the oven and then I'll throw them in the sauce when they're done. So marinara sauce, you know, it's fairly standard. Um, cans of crushed tomatoes, onion, garlic, olive oil, basil, oregano, Parmesan cheese, etc. Um, the secret is the anchovies. That's sort of the, the secret ingredient for my mom's family recipe. Even if you don't like anchovies, I've never really liked anchovies, although I'm coming around on them a bit in recent years, but, but I've always loved this sauce, even when I thought I hated anchovies. You really don't taste any anchovy flavor, it just adds some depth to the overall flavor of the sauce. That's that's just fantastic. So uh, here we go. Okay, so first part of the sauce is to get onion and garlic sautéing in your pan. So first thing to do is chop up the onion. Notice I've got the dish towel under my cutting board. Thank you, concerned viewers. Uh, there should be no slippage this time, or at least minimal. I don't know what I'm doing there. The method often works. Okay, now let's see how my onion chopping technique goes today. For the onions in the sauce, you really you don't want big chunks of onion. Uh, you want little pieces of onion that are going to almost dissolve when we cook them and add a lot to the flavor. I can't remember what this technique is called. It's called something where you slice something a whole bunch in one direction, but not quite all the way through. And then in the other direction, and that's how you get a nice chop. Now, even after I do this, I'm going to go run this knife through it again. is always hard. Okay, there's half an onion. And yeah, that does make my eyes tear a little bit, but it's not too bad. So I'll just grin and bear it. Do you guys have tricks for how to deal with onion uh, tears? Yeah, I could probably use one right about now. <laughs> So that's a pretty good start, but I'm still going to just give this some extra chopping to really get these onions broken down. So while the pan's getting hot, I'm going to chop up some garlic. The, uh, the recipe calls for seven or eight cloves. I'm going to use at least double that. You can never have too much garlic. And I've got these pre-peeled... Uh, garlic cloves that we get from Whole Foods makes it super super easy it's almost like cheating Oop. one two three four seven ten twelve. you never have too much garlic 
That looks like a good start. I'm just going to chop off the tips and mince these up nice and fine as well. Now I've never tried that same technique with the garlic that I did with the onion, but I saw a guy doing it. Maybe I should try. Hmm. <laughs> I went all the way through. Well, I'm not sure if that was easier. Okay, so I got all the tips chopped off and now I'm just going to slice up this garlic and then chop it as fine as I can. Sliced and now chopped. Okay, so here's my garlic now that I'm done chopping it. Uh, same thing as with the onions, we want it chopped up pretty much as fine as we can get it. We don't want big chunks of garlic or onion in the sauce when we're done. We want all the flavors to be melded and incorporated, uh, so chopped up as fine as possible. I almost forgot the important step that we add the oil from the anchovy cans uh, to the olive oil that we saute the garlic and the onions in. Uh, later, we'll add the fillets, but right now the oil is the first way that we start building that flavor. Um, so I'll just pull this back and I'll pour them in there. Alright, it wasn't easy, but I think I've got a camera angle here that can get to the bottom of this pot. I've got my biggest pot out because we're going to make a lot of sauce and we don't want it to splash all over the place. So it's on a medium-ish, medium-low-ish heat, but I've given the, the pot plenty of time to get up to temperature. I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil to get us going and then add the oil from these cans of anchovy fillets. Okay, now I'm going to get my onions in there. a little stir. Turning down the heat just ever so slightly. Alright, we're in business. Okay, now got my second jar of anchovy fillets. Gonna add this oil as well. really can't see what I'm filming now. Hard to explain, but I can't see the camera face, but hopefully that's coming out. Okay, I'll get my garlic in there. Okay, now this is going to saute for at least five, probably closer to ten or more minutes. Stirring fairly frequently. We're 
want to cook these onions down until they're extremely tender. They'll get a bit translucent. And then the next thing I'll do is add up the chopped anchovy fillets. Now, the recipe only calls for two cans of anchovies, but I'm going to add a third one just because I know Jennifer and I really love what this does to the sauce. I wouldn't necessarily re recommend this if it's the first time you're making it. Um, but, you know, with two cans, you really, you really don't taste anchovy at all. I'm not sure if we'll get any anchovy now when I put this one in here. It's a little bit of an experiment. Now in the meantime, while we're sauteing there, I'm going to get my anchovy fillets chopped up. Put any residual oil in the pot. Dump them out on my cutting board. Okay. Now these are, these will completely dissolve once we start cooking them. Uh, so I'm just going to give them a nice rough chop doesn't have to be precise. Yep, that's all we need. Alright, so it's been five, probably not quite ten minutes, and the onions are now very nice and tender. They're not cooked down as much as I want them to be before I add the sauce, but they are cooked down enough that it's a good time to add the anchovies. So, do I chop them up? Or you saw me chop them up, now just dump them in. And give it five minutes and these will be basically completely dissolved. Or disintegrated, perhaps, is the appropriate term. Now in the meantime, I'm going to go chop up a little parsley. Alright, so it's been, I don't know, six or seven minutes, and as you can see, the anchovy fillets have basically completely disintegrated, but everything has turned a much browner color. And, um,. It's starting to smell very nice, and I can see through my onions now, the ones that aren't completely brown. And so that means it's time to add our tomatoes. So this recipe calls for four 28-ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. Um, Jennifer picked up this brand at Whole Foods. 28-ounce uh, can crushed tomatoes. Just dump it right in there. Hmm. Now, I, crushed tomatoes I've had in the past I thought were a little chunkier, but this will do just fine, I'm sure. Two. Alright, so I got four cans of tomato sauce in there. Now I'm going to get it stirred up as well as I can, and time to add some seasonings. So, I think two to three tablespoons of dried basil is what's called for. I'm probably going to add more than that. I'm measuring just for fun. I usually wouldn't measure, but why not? Okay, so that's what three tablespoons of dried basil looks like. It's supposed to be three teaspoons of dried oregano. One, two, three, and then also calls for a teaspoon of sugar and uh, salt and pepper, an arbitrary amount. So I'll get this incorporated. Oh, here we go. And I'll start working in some salt and pepper. And 
teaspoon of sugar. Oh, maybe I was off camera there. Well, and one teaspoon of sugar. And also a handful of freshly chopped parsley. Now that is basically it. Now just let this simmer for as long as you can stand it. I've got it on four on my gas range right now. Once I get a little simmer going in here, I'll probably take it down definitely to three, probably all the way down to two. I just want a nice light simmer. I almost forgot the other secret to the recipe, which is half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. just under half a cup. There we go. Now we're happy. Alright, so we need some more garlic for the meatballs and calls for four or five cloves. I've got closer to ten here, but they're on the small side. Uh, and I've already chopped off the, the little nibby ends. But the technique that my mother suggests for the garlic for the meatballs is to crush them in kosher salt. So that is what I'm going to do. Sprinkle a bunch of salt on there, and then just use the flat side of my knife and crush these suckers. The idea is to mash it into a paste. So I will do a little chopping eventually, but first we just want to smush it into the salt. Let's see how we're doing. So that's pretty nicely mashed. And yes, you should wash your hands before you do this. Now I'll just give it a quick chop. And just a little more mashing. garlic paste. I actually decided just to like give this a nice fine chop on top of the mushing. I think I'm going to get even more of a paste-like result this way. Just seemed like the chunks were a little too big. I was imagining them continuing to exist in my meatballs and I didn't like it. Now I think we're in business. Now our meatballs also call for four slices of bread uh, with the crust removed. So I'm going to slice those off. Uh, some meatball recipes use breadcrumbs instead. You know, that's allowed. But um, I understand that sort of the traditional Italian way is to use bread. And the trick is actually that you wet the bread a bit. So after I cut these crusts off, I'm going to put my bread into this uh, strainer and I'm just gonna like drizzle some water on them so that they get damp. So here's the sink and I'm just kind of drizzling over my bread and let's see, did we kind of get both sides almost? Just give it another very wet. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of arrange them so that they, some of the water can drip out, but 
that's what we're looking for. I'll leave those right here for the moment. All right, so now it's time to start mixing the meatballs. I have uh, one pound of ground pork and one pound of ground beef. Now you can use any combination of pork and beef or veal or sausage for that matter. Uh, Jennifer's not a big fan of veal, otherwise I'd go a third veal, a third pork, a third beef. But um, just the pork and beef in equal proportions should be a great base for our meatballs. Um, ground beef. So two pounds of meat is what we're working with. Any combination you have. Now the instructions are just to combine all the ingredients, but I'm going to add my dry spices or seasonings first, so we make sure that we get try and get the meat as evenly seasoned as we can. So a little salt and pepper. Uh, also basil and oregano again. Okay, so I'm going to flip these over and basically just do that again. After washing the hands, of course. Okay, some more salt, pepper, basil. All right, now we also need our bread. So here's our moist bread. And we're going to add half a cup of Parmesan cheese, which is what's left in my bowl here. And the garlic paste. One egg that I already cracked and whipped up so that it's blended. And about a handful of parsley. That looks like enough. I chopped this up earlier when I was chopping it for the sauce. And also a teaspoon of sugar. Okay, is that everything? Meat, garlic, egg, bread, parsley, basil, cheese, salt, and pepper, oregano, sugar. So that should do it. And then the best way to get this incorporated is just to use your hands. It's hard to use a spoon to mix something like this. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot the most important ingredient. So this is the last of the secret ingredients that I'll be telling you about. This one is so secret that it's not even written down on the recipe. And that is to add raisins to the meatballs. Uh, it's just amazing what the raisins do in these meatballs. They just add a little bit of sweetness that goes with the overall savoriness of the meat so well. Um, this goes so great with these spices. So I would have already added those. Now I'm going to go wash my hands and get some raisins and put those in. All right, so I'm back with the raisins. I'm just going to add a, a nice goodly amount. Um, probably not not a cup, maybe half a cup, something like that. Uh, this was an eight ounce package. I put in a little more than half of it. It's about half a cup of raisins. Then we'll just we'll see how it looks. You want several raisins in every meatball for sure. Starting to look good. 
Just trying to get them evenly incorporated throughout the meat. Right, and I think we've pretty much done that. Okay, so that is our meatball base. Alright, so my sauce has been simmering now for about half an hour, which I figure is a good time to taste a little bit. Uh, so I've got some right here. Mm. I mean, it's coming along very nicely, but wow. That third can of anchovies uh, really shows up. I probably would not recommend the third can of anchovies for most preparations. I'm actually really liking this. but. When you only put two cans of anchovies in there, you really, you don't even know that they're anchovies. The third one, now you definitely know. I like it, but I think I'm going to have to balance it with some additional spices. Wait, that's not enough. Oh, and I'll, I'm Jennifer. I'll be a taster. Oh, well, we're tasting the sauce over here. Oh, that's my seat. Well, that's why I walked over there. Oh. It's very hot. So it cools. Oh, it blows on it. I don't want you to burn your tongue. Oh, it's <laughs> the camera's at my level, so he can't see. It. <laughs> wow, that's different. It, it's the third thing of anchovies. Mm, I like it. It's not bad. I mean, it's going to be less appealing to a like the general palate though. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to add some more basil and oregano and pepper, and I think that'll really bring it all together. Here is my simmering sauce, and it's time to add some more spices. So I've got a dash of oregano. Couple dashes of oregano. <laughs> there we go. Now this is some parsley that I didn't use for the meatballs, so I figure I might as well get it going in here. And I wanted to add... Here we go. Wanted to add some more pepper. Now, here's where I'm faced with the decision. This recipe calls for dried basil. I don't know why exactly. It seems like you could just as easily use fresh basil, which I don't have anyway. I do want to impart a little more basil flavor. What I do have is this thing. These fresh, these tubes of, you know, quasi-fresh, freshly chopped. Made with organic chopped fresh basil. How could it go wrong, right? I'm afraid it might be, it might end up too basally, like this won't incorporate the same way, but I think that it's worth a try. So I'm adding a little bit of that kind of basil instead of the dry basil. We'll see what happens. All right, so now that the sauce is adjusted and simmering happily again, it's time to form the meatballs. Uh, you can make them any size you like. Uh, in our family, we like to go on the slightly larger side. These are not cocktail meatballs we're making. These are entree knife and fork meatballs. Um, even maybe just a little bit bigger than that. But there's no science to this that I'm aware of. Just form it into a ball. And then we place it on an ungreased cookie sheet. Um, uh, if you guys were watching when I did those meatballs for Valentine's Day and then I tried them again over the weekend and I put a blog on Jennifer's site about that. You know, I was raving about the uh, doing the meatballs in the pan technique before they go in the oven with Emerald's meatballs anyway um, because it gives a nice texture to the outside. Now the tradition here is to bake these and certainly save a few calories and the oil in the pan that way. But if the cookie sheet is ungreased that you bake them on, at least you do get some great texture on uh, on one of the sides, the bottom. So these usually come out pretty good that way. Hmm. Well, that worked out rather nicely. I have exactly 12 meatballs that fit on this pan very well. Now I'm just sort of checking to see if they're all roughly the same size. I'm pretty surprised to see that I think they are. I think this one over here is a little tiny. So I'll find a little meat on a fat one. 
try to balance it out just so that uh, you know they all cook the same way it helps if they're close to the same size alright so these are looking good so they're gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes these are pretty big guys so probably be closer to 15 minutes for these but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put them in until it's closer to time to eat the sauce has been simmering for about another half an hour after I added those additional spices and I did just taste this a moment ago I'll taste it again but I actually really like it um, the basil and the extra oregano and extra um, pepper I think really balanced out the extra anchovies and now I think this might sort of be a winner I don't know if I'm getting myself there um, it's really good I'm really liking it now so we're gonna go with optional on the third um, can of anchovies definitely optional now I've got my water very heavily salted water that's now boiling so it's time to put the meatballs into the oven We're preheated to 350 degrees, and these will take about 15 minutes, I think. There they are. Okay, so now it is time to drop the pasta. The meatballs have actually been in the oven for all of 15 minutes, but I just checked the internal temp and we're only at 110, so that's not there. We gotta get to at least a 150, 160 range. Now when the meatballs come out of the oven, I will put them in the hot sauce. The temp will probably rise a little bit but we gotta get them at least up there, which will happen in the next 10 minutes or so. So now it's time to drop the pasta. And there you have it. Mm, this probably would have been better done with a tripod, but it's actually pretty hard to get the tripod oriented in a way where you can see the pots on the stove. And I moved my rig. <laughs> but there you go, so this, you know, we're just boiling some pasta here. It'll take about 10 minutes. And when it's done, I'm going to use tongs, and I'm going to take it right out of there and put it right into there. Here are the meatballs, fresh out of the oven. Got my temperature right up to 150, which should be perfect. So now it's time to uh, place them gently into the tomato sauce. Which I will do left-handed. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Meatballs, meat sauce. These will cook just a little more in there, but my sauce is just at a low simmer. And then my pasta, which is boiling over there, should be just about done any minute. And then I can just spoon it right into this pot, and we will be in business. Wish you guys could smell this, but hopefully you'll make this for yourselves, and then you will get to smell it. Okay, that's all of our meatballs. Alright, so I just tasted the pasta, and it's still slightly al dente, but that is the way we want it, because it's going to finish cooking in the sauce. So I'm just using some tongs here to pull it out of the water, and just drop it right into my sauce there. Pardon my poor camera work, but this is hard to do. One hand on each thing, <laughs> and there we go. So I'm going to put the camera down to fish the last couple of noodles out there and then we'll stir this up. Alrighty, so I fished all the noodles out of my pasta water and now I'm trying to stir this up which is not working left handed so we will switch hands see if I can just get you guys a view of what this looks like as we incorporate the pasta into the sauce. Now from what I understand there is some starch on the exterior of the pasta which because we are putting it straight into the sauce without rinsing the pasta or letting it dissipate in any other way should help the sauce stick to the pasta. Additionally, we take the pasta out of the water when it's al dente so it finishes cooking over here. So now all of these delicious flavors and textures should just marry together. And I'm going to let this simmer for, I don't know, like three minutes maybe. And then it's time to eat. I'm serving this again with the tongs. I think it's sort of beautiful how much sauce comes out when you just grab the pasta because of the way we finished it. 
So this is my plate. I'm going to have, I'm definitely going to have three meatballs. Am I going to put them all on the plate at once? Yes. Yes, I am. Where'd, <laughs> where'd they go? There we go. Today, I probably only had about 10 of my Weight Watchers points today. It's been sort of a busy, not eating a lot day. So we're having fun with our pasta. Now, I am still going to ladle some additional sauce on top of there, but God, that looks beautiful. Right around over here, grab my ladle, some bonus sauce, and then I'm going to get a perfect bite assembled and show you guys the eating. Alright, so I got a nice twirl of pasta. It's still nice and hot. You can probably see the sweat on my brow. And let's see how we did. Hmm. <laughs> That was a good meatball right there. Jennifer just gave me a funny look. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell. I had a piece of meatball at the end. Twirl the pasta. Get the meatball at the end. That's how you do the ideal bite. Mm. That was freaking delicious. I gotta say. I'm very pleased. I'm not gonna make you watch me eat another bite. It won't be graceful. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you give it a shot to uh, make it for yourself. And let me know how it went.